Christmas is a time for big gifts and a big season for saying thank you. In fact, it seems like the bigger the gift, the bigger the thank you. After all, it's really easy to say thank you for the things you're really excited about. It's a lot harder to say thank you for things you're not excited about, like socks and underwear. When you open that gift that you're so excited about and you can't believe you got it, of course you're gonna explode in an endless stream of thank you, thank you, thank you. What? Oh, it's too early to talk about Christmas? But, okay, I'll take off the hat. Well, we know that no Christmas gift will ever compare to the gift that God has given us in Jesus. He was the original Christmas gift. Even before the wise men showed up with their gold and their frankincense and myrrh, God prepared a Christmas gift for us that we would never be able to afford on our own. He sent Jesus, his son, to earth as a baby. But wait, you say, why are you still talking about Christmas? You're right, it's not Christmas. But at Christmas, we have an easier time remembering to say thank you. Because remember, mom and dad have taught us how to say thank you. So we're talking about Christmas today because that was the start of Jesus' life. And many people who met Jesus while he was here on earth forgot to say thank you. Many people didn't understand what he was here to do. They missed the opportunity to say thank you to him then. But there was one woman, and you heard her story today, one woman who was so moved by what Jesus did for her that she had to say thank you in the most big way she could. This woman was no one famous. In fact, she wasn't very well known at all. And the people who did know her didn't like her because she made bad decisions in her life. She was living sinfully and they looked down on her for that. But Jesus offered her something that no one else ever offered her. He offered her God's love and forgiveness. And the way she said thank you sets a powerful example for us to remind us that we need to say thank you to Jesus for what he's done for us as well. You know, it took a lot of courage for her to approach Jesus, to come into that house where people were talking about her behind her back, maybe saying negative things as soon as she walked in. But she didn't care. She was there for Jesus, not for them. She did what she knew she needed to do. She needed to say thank you in a meaningful way. So she took a really expensive jar of perfume. And that might sound kind of weird to us, but this was a really valuable object that she would have saved a long time for. And she took that perfume and she used it to bathe his feet, to wash his feet. And it was normal for a servant to wash a visitor's feet when they came into a house. But no one else washed Jesus' feet that day, except for that woman who leaned down to use something very expensive, priceless perfume and then her own hair to dry his feet. It might seem strange to us, but God wants us to have that same thankfulness for the things he has done for us as that woman did for Jesus and the things he had done for her. That story that began at Christmas with the baby born in the manger and the life that Jesus lived, never sinning, teaching us how to have a friendship with God, and then when he chose to die on the cross to take the punishment for our sins, even though he never sinned, he took the punishment for our sins. Jesus did what we could never do. He has given us a gift we could never afford to buy for ourselves, certainly couldn't afford to buy for anyone else. We should say thank you for that every time we think of it, and we should think of it often. Jesus paid the price for our sin, dying the death that we deserved, so when we ask him to forgive our sin and make him the Lord, the savior of our lives, he gives us a new life, a new start, and we get to spend eternity forever with God. Jesus deserves all the praise because he has given us so much. So how can we say thank you for all of the wonderful things God has done for us and for this salvation that Jesus has given us? Well, the first thing we can do is say thank you in prayer. When you pray, thank God for what he has done for you. Thank God for Jesus. Talk to Jesus and thank him for laying his life down for you. We can also thank God by singing praise. That's why we sing at church, to thank God for what he has done for us, to worship God, to worship Jesus. And we can thank God by sharing the good news. When you take time to tell others about what Jesus has done for you, the blessings God has given you in your life and how much God loves you, and you tell them that God loves them too, you are worshiping Jesus and saying thank you for those gifts because you are sharing that message of God's love with others. Jesus is the greatest gift ever given, a gift we could never earn or repay. 
So let's thank God every day for the gift of Jesus. Let's sing his praise and let's make sure we're sharing with others about how much he loves us and them. Let me pray for you now. God, thank you so much for all of the gifts you've given us, but especially for Jesus. Thank you that Jesus came to earth and willingly died for our sins. Thank you that you made a way for us to be with you forever. Would you help us to think about this and say thank you for this every day and to share about your love with others. In your name, amen. Okay, friends, it's time to pause and pray. Here's what I want you to think about today. What is one thing we can do to thank Jesus for his love? Take a moment to say thank you to Jesus and ask him to help you show your thanks.